Smith Productions presents a memorial biography of Frank McCourt. Frank McCourt was truly a symbol of victory in a battle against extreme adversity. He not only escaped the slums of Ireland, but returned to his native America, earned a college education, was gainfully employed, and wrote three instant best-selling books chronicling his life. Even though we were poor, at the lowest level, either the, the, below the lowest economic level, we were always excited. Uh, it, it was rich in the sense that we had a lot to uh, look up to, to look forward to, a lot to aspire to, a lot to dream about. But in, in economic circumstances, it was, it was de desperate. It was, it was Calcutta with rain, at least they're warm in Calcutta. But it, it was desperate because of, of certain things, ingredients like uh, my father being an alcoholic, uh, my mother having too many babies in too, in too short a time, no work available in Ireland. And even though, even then, when my father did get a job, he, he drank the wages. Then there was the, the, uh, the harsh kind of schooling we had with schoolmasters who ruled with the stick. And then the, 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 the overwhelming presence of the church, which, uh, which uh, imbued us with fear all the time. So it was fear, uh, dampness, uh, poverty, alcoholism, fear of the church, fear of the schoolmasters, fear in general. Frank McCord was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1931 to a family of Irish immigrants. His parents had seven children, but only Frank and three of his brothers, Malachi, Michael, and Alphonsus, would survive. At four years old, Frank and his family returned to Limerick, Ireland to find work. However, his father took to drinking what money he had earned. As the conditions worsened, Frank contracted typhoid. Today, typhoid is considered life-threatening and affects about 22 million people each year. In Ireland, where there is little medicine, Frank would have been treated in an old building, like this, but there was little they could do for him. The lavery, a place where everyone in his lane dumped their waste. McCord actually got typhoid simply by the flies in the lavatory. The flies would land in the lavatory, and then they would go into the McCord home and land on the sugar jar, or in the jam, because of their attraction to the sugar, and that infested the food they ate. McCourt was almost killed because of this disease. He was in the hospital for three and a half months until he finally recovered. Frank's father, Malachi McCourt, left when Frank was 11 to find work in the wartime factories of Coventry, England. However, he sent little money home and eventually abandoned his family altogether. Frank continued his education at Lemmy's National School until age 13. At 14, he got a job delivering telegrams. He would spend the next several years alternating between work and petty crime to feed his family. At age 19, Frank immigrated back to America and spent some time working at various odd jobs. I hear a voice. He was drafted into the army at the onset of the Korean War. After a tour in Germany, he used the GI Bill to attend college. Court managed to gain enrollment in New York University. His passion for storytelling was fueled by his creative writing classes. After graduation, he worked in New York City public school system teaching creative writing. He married his third wife, Ellen Frey, in 1994. After retiring from teaching, McCourt published a book about his childhood in Ireland. The book, Angels of Los Ashes, has been published in 27 countries in 17 different languages and won a swarm of prestigious awards. The biographies that continued his life story, Tiz and Teacher Man, also became bestsellers. Frank McCourt died on July 19, 2009, of melanoma, a skin cancer, and he is survived by Ellen, his daughter Maggie, and his grandchildren Shiara, Frank, Jack, and Avery. Lala, bye.